So, yeah, three times. <laughs> Because you didn't know I was going to be gone that last Sunday. We we're going to finish. And, it, and it's called, the, you know, a heart of Thanksgiving. But, and we know Thanksgiving is over. But there's some important things that I wanted to continue to talk to you about today. That I believe that they bear importance in our spiritual growth. And so I want to continue that. And we'll call it part two of a heart of Thanksgiving. Lord, thank you again for the opportunity to come and to look at your word. We know that in your word we find the truth. We also know, Lord, that it's up to us whether we obey the truth or whether we ignore it. I ask, Lord, that as we go through your word today, whatever may be that you want each person to have, and I know it can be different for everyone, but, Lord, may there be one or two things that each person takes from here today that will help to impact their lives and change them for all eternity. And we give you praise today in Jesus' name. Amen. The last time I was here, we used the text, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. And we talked about how you're to look at each other, how we're to look at ourselves. Look carefully, then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. And remember, we talked about that. And then we talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12 through 14, about that we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. How many of you know that if you've been born again, you have the spirit from the living God who is living in you? And for some, I, some to me that's mind-blowing. That the Holy Spirit is present throughout the entire universe, and yet He... God loves us so much, and the Spirit, and of course, Jesus, all are one, and yet they're separate. And so, so there's that love that God has allowed and, and placed the Holy Spirit in each of us. So I've said this before. You and I, as believers, we are carrying around the divine within us. I call it the, the divine. I'm talking about God. He is within us. He goes everywhere we go. He doesn't take a break when you go to the bathroom. He goes in there with you. He doesn't take a break when you actually are doing something you're not supposed to be doing. He is always with you. But, you know, we can also grieve the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible, and we talked about a couple of things that we were going to discuss. And, and then in the first point, if you, don't, if you don't have that today, I'll go back and just say that one. Number one, don't get drunk on wine, but be filled with the Spirit. That's point number one. So if you can find that and put that on the screen, that'd be great. Don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, notice it didn't say don't drink wine. I know some, there are some churches that say alcohol is a sin, period. Now, for some of you, it is, because if you, if you drink it, you're going to go over the edge, and you're going to get drunk, and the next thing you know, it's good. But that could be true of anything that we do. And so, for some people, they have to abstain completely. It's not saying, though, that having a drink is wrong. It's saying letting it control and master your life is wrong. And anything that masters our life is wrong and you have to ask yourself what is the one thing in my life that dominates my mind and my thoughts more than anything else and controls my actions and if that thing is not under control by the living God if you have not submitted that to him and it has become your master and God doesn't want us to be filled with whatever that may be but he wants us to be filled with the spirit now you already have the spirit but how are you filled with the spirit Here's how you're filled with the Spirit. Now, there's a couple of ways, and we'll talk about the second one later on. But the first way is when you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes and He abides with you. And when you and I begin to cast off all of these different things that we have in our life that are unlike Christ, the more the Spirit of God begins to take control of those areas of our life. And we start to get more filled and more filled and more filled with the Spirit. To the point where those things no longer have mastery over us. And that's what he's talking about in this situation. Now, so and that was the point that I wanted to make there. Don't get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. And then we took that all the way down to Galatians 5, 22 through 23. And we talked about how that the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, 
And Kelly's talked about that. Pastor Kelly's talked about that re recently. Somebody tell me, first of all, what is the first fruit of the Spirit? Love. If you don't have real love from God, you're not going to be able to do the rest of these things that are listed there. The, you're not going to have the peace and patience and kindness and goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Let me ask you right now. In your own hearts and minds, when you look at this list, now let's take love out of it for a moment. Look at, are there some of those that you didn't do very good this week? Joy, peace, did somebody steal your joy? How about your peace? Were you, did you have a lack of patience? Did you show somebody, you know, unkindness? Were you good to people? Were you faithful in the things that you're to be faithful about? You know, in other words, if you tell somebody you're going to do something, guess what? You need to do it. You know, a lot of Christians fall down on that. I do that every once in a while, too. A lot of times they'll say, well, I'll be so-and-so. I'll meet you there at 5 o'clock, and you never show up. Is that a good thing? What well, if you did that with your job? You get fired. And so what, what happens is God wants us to become faithful. He wants us to be gentle towards one another. He wants us to have self-control. So if there's any of those that you have failed at this week, then what's happened is that your love for God is there, but it's not to the degree where you're being filled to where these things are taking control. And so there's something in your life that needs to be jettisoned in order for those things to become more prominent in your life. And so we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. And, of course, we know that there's also gifts of the Spirit, which we're going to address even those, okay? But not today, But because I want to go on. Point number two. You got point number two there? Point number two. We're talking again about having a heart of thankfulness. Somebody tell me something today you're thankful for. Just off the top of your head. Being alive. Being alive. Staying alive, staying alive. Ooh, ooh. What else? That tells you my generation, right? Never mind. Family. What else? You said the same thing. Say what more? More what, Charlie? Warm weather. Yeah. You know, you ever seen those little memes on there and, you know, People in, in Florida, when it's in the 60s, we're all bundled up. And people from over north, they're, they're like, what's wrong with these people? They're shorts and they got tank tops on. All right. What else are you thankful for? Jesus. Your church. I can't hear some of you. Tolerance. Healings. Your wife. Being free. Your family. Having a home, because there's a lot of homeless. See, you, we, we could just go on and on and on with this, right? Let me ask you, how many of you had a Thanksgiving dinner with turkey or ham or something or another? All right, do you take that for granted? Sometimes we do, though, don't we? Because there's many who don't. So we want to be able to have thankfulness in our heart. And that brings me to point number two. This is a way that you and I have thankfulness. The Bible says address one another. Not dress one another, but address. Now, if I address what I'm... I'm, a, I'm addressing you right now, am I not? And I'm addressing you by teaching and preaching the Word. That's how I'm addressing you. But it also says this, that we're to address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now... Some people get all excited when they see that word hymns, and all of a sudden they're thinking, Aha, I got you, Pastor Dave. You're just singing them old hymns. That's not what it's talking about. A little bit, but that's not what it's talking about. And I want to talk to you about what this means today. And Kelly is going to help me, and whoever else he has, he's got. So, Address one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So turn to Ephesians 5.19. And it says that we're to address one another. Now this is God's word. This is not my word. We're to address one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Now, you and I all need to understand the power of Scripture. You think the Scripture is powerful? 
But we also need to understand the power of praise and the power of worship. Now, sometimes we throw the two of them together, praise and worship, because we do both. But we are to understand the power of those things. The scripture, you need the word. You need to read it. You need to hear it. You need to speak it. You need to pray it. We need the power of praising God. You ever been in your car and you turned something on that was a, a, a great song and, and then you just found yourself crying and you got one hand in the air and you got the other on that steering wheel hoping you don't crash and you're just praising God? Yeah, I've done that many times. Worshiping. The key portion of this verse is the, is the reminder to address one another. You mean that I'm to address and you're to address me and everybody else in this room with psalms, hymns, and, and spiritual songs? Isn't that what it says? Does the Bible lie? No. So he's instructing us to do this. Paul wasn't just telling us something that was for our own good. Paul is addressing... He, listen, he's talking to the church at Ephesus. He's addressing the church. What's the church made up of? Individuals like you and I who love the Lord. So he's addressing the church and he wants them to accept... Now listen to what I'm about to tell you. Their responsibility for each other. Did you know that we're responsible for each other? And how do we show that? In the way that we treat each other. Is that right? Have you been to church before and been mistreated? And if you have, then that goes totally contrary to what the Word of God tells us to do. Paul's addressing the church, and he says, here's how I want you to address one another. It's our responsibility. We should, we've got to remind each other of God's goodness through, and I'm going to give you these three things. Here's how, how we're to remind each other of God's goodness. All right? A, Psalms, scriptures of praise. Psalms, scriptures of praise. Now, how many have a favorite psalm? Oh, all right? So if you have a, a favorite psalm, come up here real fast. Don't make it slow. You're going to be real fast. I don't want you to just tell us what the psalm is. Just say it. Don't. You light up my life. Okay, that's another f famous song too, isn't it? What else? Somebody else got a scripture, a psalm from the book of Psalms? Come on. Nobody? You got a, you got a Bible, right? That's not, a, that's not a psalm. It doesn't say that. Nope. Oh, it's a song, but not a psalm. It's P-S-A-L-M. We're looking at a psalms. Scriptures of praise. It has to be scripture. Psalm 111. Read it. Um, praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Okay. Great are the works of the Lord. Good. So I'm just because this whole psalm is really incredible. Ten verses. Ten verses. What do you got? Psalms 98:4. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth in song. Rejoice and sing praises. Sing to the Lord with harp, the harp, and the sound of the song. Okay, one more. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. All right, now those, those are psalms. Are those good psalms? All right, he says we're to address each other in the psalms, right? Now, let me tell you what a psalm is. It's a scripture of praise, and I want you to look at Psalm 150, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 150, verses 1 and 2. All right, here's what it says. You might want to mark these in your Bible. It says, praise the Lord. Now, why does it have an exclamation mark there? Because it's excited, right? So he's not saying, praise the Lord. That sounds sound like you're very... Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty heavens. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Has He done mighty deeds? Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. All right, some of you came up and gave a scripture. 
of, of praise. So, do you know that all these psalms were actually sang? They weren't just written and spoken. They were sang. Somebody sung those. David sung a lot of them. Kelly, can you, can you sing a song? Tell us. We got a few of them here. Go for it. Uh, the first one is Psalm 40. And Psalm 40 is actually a song called Psalm 40 as well by a band called New Song. And the scripture says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. It says, he has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. And in the song that they wrote, it literally says, I will wait for you, O Lord, because you have filled my heart with joy. You put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to you. All I want to do when I wake up is spend my day with you, sing a new song. So they are literally taking scripture and rewriting it into a melody of their own, because they, of course, don't know the melody of what David is singing or whoever the psalmist is on any particular one of these. Uh, then there's a song that... Just a couple of weeks ago, Pastor Dave was reading from Psalm 111, verse 10, and in my spirit came this new song, and it was verbatim from Scripture. The Scripture says, Fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. Praise him forever. And so there was a song coming in a melody that I started singing, and I wrote it down real quick so I wouldn't forget it. And it was, um, all who obey him will grow in wisdom. His praise endures forevermore. Amen. So that's another example of a psalm being sung as a song through us. And even another one, which is a song that I almost have ready that we almost sang today, but I just didn't think it was completely ready yet, is a song that I named after the psalm that it is, Psalm 139. And Psalm 139 says, just two, two scriptures out of the whole psalm, but there's more I'm going to add to it. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. And so the song that I have says, Search me, O God, examine my heart, help me become more like you are, and any offense in me that you find, reveal it, O Lord, and open my eyes. Test me and know my anxious thoughts attendeth my soul. Search me, O oh God. So those right there are specific psalms that are verbatim words in, in, uh, in the psalm itself that are transposed, or not transposed, transferred into lyrics. And those lyrics, when you put your own melody to them, becomes a song through a psalm. Amen. And so you see the example there that all of those psalms were written as songs. And so Kelly said he's working on one right now. He, he just sang it. It's, it's verbatim scripture. Am I right? Do you think that that's a good thing for us? Because when you sing the psalms, what happens? You begin to remember them. All right. How many of you can uh, sing the, uh, some of the lyrics to uh, Sweet Home Alabama? All right. And how many of you can sing uh, you know, Free Bird or something like that? You know, see what I'm saying? There's songs that you can sing that you memorized 
as because you listen to them over and over, you sang them over and over, and they're in your head. And when they come on, you can sing along with it. But God is saying we're to address each other with psalms. You take these psalms and you turn them into a song to each other. And that's exactly what Kelly has done. The second thing are hymns. Okay, what's a hymn, Pastor Dave? Somebody said the old rugged cross. Okay, that's a hymn. Because a, a hymn is songs of praise to God written by the church. That's the next one. Songs of praise to God written by the church. Now, a, the, the word hymn comes from the Greek word hymnos. And I think you should have this also, Santa, up there. It comes from the word hymnos, okay, which means a song of praise. Strictly a song used in Christian worship, usually sung by the congregation, and characteristically having a, a metrical, strophic, or stanzic, non-biblical text. In other words, they're good songs like the old rugged cross, but they're not verbatim. Does that make sense? They're not verbatim. You don't just, you can't go in and find that song in, from, from your songbook and find that in the Bible. But it has good words to it, has good meaning and good doctrine to it. So we sing some of those songs. And let me give you an example of that. Which is why I have this other one here. Okay? I found, I found my other one. So let's, let's get that. Do you have that? Testing one, two. Okay. Then sings my soul. You know it? My Savior God to thee. What's the next words? How great thou art. That's a low note. How great thou art. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Let's sing it again. Then sings my soul. Throne of my directly out of scripture but they're about the scripture and they're wonderful truths that we sing so you see what the difference between a psalm is somebody tell me what the difference of a psalm is alright so you, you sing right out of the bible alright let me switch 
So you sing right out of the Bible. Leave this on. And then a hymn is something that is sung by the church that has doctrinal truth that inspires and encourages. You know, the Bible says that when you and I uh, come together, that we're to do three things. We're to strengthen, build up, and encourage one another. That's what the Bible says when it talks about when we give a word. We're to strengthen, build up, and encourage. Do those songs build up, strengthen, and encourage? Absolutely. And so the third one, you had, you know what a praise is, you know what a, or a, a, a psalm is, you know what hymns are, right? The difference. And you can have old hymns out of the hymn book, or you have present day hymns also. And the third one is spiritual songs. Now, what in the world is a spiritual song, huh? These are impromptu responses of praise. In other words, out of your heart just begins to flow words of praise through song to the Lord. They're just spontaneous that you begin to sing. Let me, let me give you... They're impromptu or, 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 or like this. Here's another thing. Hang on a second. Hang on because I want to make sure that we get this this morning. Because there's another thing that goes along with it. First of all, all of a sudden, you and I could just start singing a song and, and the congregation would follow. For instance, if I were to start singing... Praise, praise God from whom all blessings flow. It just came out spontaneous. How many know that? Praise Him, all creatures here below. Sing that with me. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Right? What else we got? All right. I got it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will really show it. If you're happy and you know it, Kurt, clap your hands. Now we can just keep at it, right? And so spontaneously, we could sing spiritual songs that build up and encourage. But also, spiritual songs are also songs that just spontaneously a person will start to sing, and you don't even know where you're going with it. And Kelly's done that on several occasions. So Kelly, give us a spiritual song that just out of the blue just hit you, and you started singing it. You are you are holy, you are worthy, Lord of love, and we praise your name, we give you thanks for all that you've done. He's just singing a melody and the words are just coming, that's what he's done. Yes, you are holy. think that you could do that some of you do but do you know that you can do that you can just spontaneously start singing to the Lord and the melody will come and that's what spiritual songs are words that build up encourage and strengthen us that's what making a melody to the Lord is all about when we look at that Number three, on your, on your list there, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Ephesians 5.19 says this, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Now, he's doing that with his heart. Have you ever just broke out spontaneous and said, Thank you, Lord, for you are good, and your mercy endures 
forever. So I just made that up on the spot. Why? Because that's how I felt. That's a spiritual song. That's making melody with your heart. All right, the word melody means a musical piece or song to be accompanied by an instrument. And so as we sing that, we, we, we're singing just something spontaneous. Then we go and we write the chords down real fast. Or we record it on our phones so somebody else can do that for us. Because it's a song that God is giving in order to build up and encourage others. All right, Isaiah 51, 3 says, The Lord will comfort Israel again and have pity on her ruins. Her desert will blossom like Eden, her barren wilderness like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found there. Th songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. Songs of thanksgiving will fill the air. How do we use it? It's an instrument of praise, melody. Is, it, is using an instrument of praise. All right, we're singing and making melody. All right, Amos 5, 23 through 25. You had that in your Bible? Are you with me? Are you hanging there with me now? Away with your noisy hymns of praise. How many of you know that you get noisy with it and you can just make that the number one thing? He says, I will not listen to the music of your harps. Instead, I want to see a mighty flood of justice, an endless river of righteous living. He's saying, now, you can come to church and you can do all this kind of stuff. He says, but get away with it because I want you to start treating people right. I want you to start living right in your life. That's more important to me than you coming in here and raising your hands and acting like you're all spiritual or something. Are these psalms and hymns and spiritual songs important? Absolutely. But the first thing it wants us to do is get our hearts right with Him. That's the most important thing. And then these things will begin to flow. All right? Nagon means to play a stringed instrument, to play on a stringed instrument. All right? And so Isaiah 23, 16, take a harp and walk the streets. <laughs> Sounds like a minstrel, right? You forgotten harlot. Now, he's calling us harlots. Why is he doing that? Because a harlot is someone who does what? Goes out and gives away what really belongs to God. And he says, make sweet melody and sing your song so that you will be remembered again. He's calling Israel a harlot. But you know, our church, churches today have become harlots also. We need to get back to where we get our hearts right with God. There's justice. There's righteous living in our lives. So that these songs of hymns and praise, songs of joy, these melodies can come out. And people will know that they're real. People will know how we treat them. There's another word. Solo means to, praise, to celebrate the praises of God with music. There's another, that's, that's another word. So he's talking about using stringed instruments. Do we use stringed instruments here? Yes. yes. All right. And he says we're to praise God with music. God wants us to both encourage one another with praise and make worship a regular part of our lives. You and I should be worshiping on a regular part, make it a regular part of our lives. Music inspires and changes us. Am I right? Now, how many, when you're traveling on a, on a trip, there's, you first start out, you're all happy, and there's certain tunes that you want on there. You got your road list that you're using, all right? I know bikers do. You know, I get in my Camaro, and yeah, and I got the T-tops off. There's certain music I play. I play it loud. And then there's times that I play others. But we're to celebrate the praises of God with music. Music inspires, it changes. You know, the, the devil can never grab hold of our lives if we make worship a habit. Did you realize that? He cannot grab a hold of your life if you make worshiping him a habit. Make it a habit. Number four. Here's another point. Giving thanks always and for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks how often? And for how much? Everything. 
Ephesians 5.20, giving thanks always for everything to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul tells the church that you and I are to give thanks always and for everything. When we respond to the Lord out of a heart of gratitude, we start seeing the world differently. How many have been around people that all they ever did was complain and mumble? Well, I hate this place. I can't wait to get out of here. That person makes me sick. How does this work today? Well, you know, same old, same old. Right? But what happens if you have a heart of gratitude and praise that you even have a job? All of a sudden, all those other things start to not be as important anymore. That's what happens. We see the world differently. Psalm 138, verses 1 through 3. I give you thanks, O Lord, with all of my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. What is it when it says the gods? You mean there's gods? Yeah, small g, meaning celestial beings that he's put in charge of different, you know, there's different ranks of angels, right? All right, so we're going to sing our praises before God, but also before all the angels. Do you know that right now this room is full of angels? Full of angels. And there may be some bad ones scattered in here. I hope that they've been driven out by now. And they're sitting on your shoulder right now saying, I wish that guy would shut up. But there's others around ministering to you and saying, you know, there's something here today that Pastor Dave said that comes from God that you need to listen to. And it may be one thing that's stuck. The Bible says that we have, He has sent us ministering angels that minister to us. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness. For your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. His promises are backed by the honor of His name. How, do we ever dishonor His name? Yeah. GD, right? Yeah. Oh my God. Is that honoring His name? No. No. You think about it. As soon as I pray, verse 3, you answer me. You encourage me by giving me strength. You may not see the answer, but the moment you start praying, he starts to end the answer, send the answer. And then number five, our last point today. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. See, I did Ephesians, a section of Ephesians here, through verse number 21. Yes, come on up. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. I want our prayer team to come at this time also. Verse 19 and 20 gave special Practical ways in which Christians can express being filled with the Spirit. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Encouraging one another. Paul brings out another, which is mutual submission. Now, what does mutual submission mean? What do you mean? I've got to submit. Submission in the context of Christian relationship includes this. The idea of putting someone else besides yourself first. That's what Christian submission is. Their needs above our needs. You know, these things that I'm talking about, they're not for personal benefit, but rather out of reverence for Christ. Do you know when we serve one another, we're serving Christ? I'm going to read Matthew 25, verses 35 to 40, and we're going to end with that. And as I read it, and you need something to pray about today, I want you to come and pray. Let's do that right now. Matthew 25. For I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When do we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? Listen to verse 40. And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to the one of the least of these, my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. When we treat each other the right way, 
we're doing it to Christ. If you mistreat, you're mistreating Christ. That's what the scripture is saying. So what have we been talking about? A heart of thanksgiving. Living a heart of thanksgiving to God. Can we do that?